Payment using a check. That tea was wonderful. I think I am full for the rest of the day. Aha, uh -huh. we will see about that. So, you have just offered cash payment to the cashier. Of course, unless you wanted me to write him a check because of two cups of tea. That would be ridiculous. By the way, I don't know a lot about checks except that it is a piece of paper that can be used to pay someone. Look, just say that you don't know anything about checks. It is really funny when you call them a piece of paper. Okay, I don't know anything about checks. What are they? So a check can be described as an order to the bank to pay the person named the amount specified on the check. Wow, so different from a piece of paper. Told you. Now, before we go far, there are some terms that you need to understand from the word go. Shoot. The first term is the drawer. Now, this has nothing to do with those things you use at home for storage. In this case, I am referring to the person who holds the bank account. Thanks for the clarification. Mm. I was beginning to wonder how those wooden materials are related to a check. You are welcome. The drawer is also the one who writes the check. The second term is the drawee. Yes. This refers to the bank on which the check is drawn. So it is the bank that pays the money. Correct. And the person to be paid the money by the bank is called the payee. Are we together? Yes, we are. Great. In that case, we can move on to the contents of a check. A check should contain the date of payment, mm -hmm. the name of the person to be paid, mm -hmm. as well as the amount of money to be paid. Mm -hmm. For clarity purposes, this should be written both in figures and in words. That is very thorough. There is no room for mistakes. It should also contain the signature of the account holder, a check number, the account number of the drawer, and the appropriate revenue stamp. So, are there any particular advantages of using checks rather than cash? Yes. For one, it is more secure than notes and coins can ever be. It is also easily portable rather than if you were to carry a lot of cash around. And that makes them more convenient when paying out large sums of money. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, how does the drawer prove that he has issued out a check? A very valid question. So, every check has a counterfoil that can be used as evidence of payment. And what is a counterfoil? Now, when a check is torn from the checkbook, mm -hmm. there's a piece of it that remains in the checkbook as proof. I see. Another good thing about checks is that if the payee needs the money urgently, then he or she can get it from the bank by discounting the check. Meaning? In the simplest of terms, the bank gives the payee the money, but first, the bank deducts its discount. Mm, I see. Moving on. Checks are good because... The drawer does not have to go to the bank to withdraw money so as to make payments. Finally, checks can be used to pay a third party, that is, someone else other than the named payee. How does that work? The original payee must sign the check as a way of endorsing it. Mm -hmm. And of course, the name of the third party is also written on the check. Understood. We also have disadvantages of using checks as well. Such as? When a check is discounted before its maturity, it attracts extra charges. Checks also take some time before they clear, so it is difficult to use them in an urgent situation. Even in normal circumstances, mm. a check must attract some charges for using it. That's right. Also, checks can be dishonored. Before you ask me to explain, this means that a bank can refuse to pay money written on a check. Why? That is a whole discussion on its own, which we'll do shortly. As for now, let's get done with the disadvantages. You are the boss. Use of check means that uh, the payee has to go to the bank, which means it's time consuming. Agreed. Besides, not all people are enthusiasts of check. Some people refuse to be paid by check. Yes, for fear that they may be dishonored. Lastly, it may require the payee to have a bank account. Now, did you know that there are different types of checks? How would I know when moments ago I didn't even know the definition of a check? <coughs> we have a bearer check where the payment is made to the bearer of the check. So you are saying that anyone who presents the check to the bank gets paid? Yes, as for the other check, the money is paid to the named person only. 
This means that the person who reaches the bank with a check must also be identified as the one named in the check. I think that's better than a bearer check. If you say so. Have you ever seen a check that has two parallel lines drawn across the face? Mm, sounds familiar. That kind of check is called a crossed check. It is usually marked with either not negotiable or account pay only. Do the crossings have any meaning? Yes, they do. We have two types of crossings, general crossing and special crossing. Mm -hmm. Now, for general crossing, the check is crossed with two lines, with or without any writings. It means that the check will be paid through a bank. As for special crossing, the two parallel lines contain the words, account pay only. And what do that mean? It means that the check will be paid through the account of the pay only. Ah, here we are back in the office. You haven't told me yet why a check can be dishonored. Why don't you go right in? I will grab something quickly and join you soon. Okay.